something is said a couple times, and I'm going to get your take on this. You know, with this whole – we talked about Stormy Daniels earlier. With the whole coming out of people against, you know, Matt Lauer, Les Moonves, um, yeah. oh, God, uh, who's the other one? Uh, Bill O'Reilly. We're all these, these the, you know, the, um, the movement of the um, – of the Me Too, and then it try was, was that a play like the, were they martyrs to try to get Trump, you know, um, out of the office based on that? Well, I definitely think that that was a reaction formation to President Trump because mm-hmm. you had something going on in the in the '90s with uh, Bill Clinton, President Clinton, and Monica Lewinsky, mm-hmm. but because uh, they were from a media perspective and a liberal perspective on side with them. Uh, that sort of fire didn't break out. But when when the president uh, became president and he had some outlandish behavior with women, they can not fire him. And so they went after people. Uh, and then all of a sudden, you know, they, they realized, wait a minute, this is a bipartisan thing. If I'm going after Bill O'Reilly, it may implicate Matt Lauer or Charlie Rowe. And mm-hmm. so, you know, this this uh, this Me Too movement is really mushroomed. Boy, Matt Lauer really disappeared after this, though. Not a peep out of him. Yeah, no no question. And you got Senator Gillibrand in our state, state of New York, running for president. She's now disavowing the Clintons who helped her build her career. I heard that. So she's yeah. basically saying, well, he should have resigned. In the meantime, uh, the reason why she's in the seat that she's in has to do with Bill and Hillary Clinton. But, but that's a politician. You know, a politician is a different beast than us. You know, the loyalty... Uh, the confection and the recipe that makes a politician uh, is nothing like the average person. I mean, they, they could care less. I mean, they sell people down the river in two seconds. So, mm-hmm. so you know, what I would say to you is that that movement um, is alive and kicking. And in a lot of ways, it's helped women. It's made them safer in their workplace mm-hmm. environments. But in, some, but in some ways... And people will be really mad at me for saying this, but I'm just going to tell you what I really think. In some ways, it's hurt women because if you have every single man on pins and needles uh, in terms of their potential conversations with women throughout corporate America, what will end up happening is they'll talk to women less. They'll be fearful that they're going to say something offensive Mm -hmm. that could cause them to lose their jobs. You know what? I agree with that. And let me let me tell you why. Less than women. And I think that's unfortunate because I would want women to be treated equally from a pay perspective, but also from a. Absolutely. But being being born and raised in the South, I say and do a lot of things that a lot of people just flat out can't get by with. And I am just one of these people that have always complimented a woman uh, if she's pretty. Um, this day and age, you really can't do that. You, If you're at Humana, where I worked for five years, uh, in the mortgage business, where I was at for seven years, I always told the boss whether she was pretty or so-and-so was pretty or what. And no one said a word. But now in this day and age, you let me walk into any corporate business. Oh, my God, you look very pretty today. And chances are you're gone. And well, it really changed dramatic. And I certainly wouldn't have meant any harm by saying a lady's pretty. But then again, if you don't say that lady's pretty, then you must mean she's ugly. Well, here's 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 what I would say. Um, well, let me put it to you this way: um, you've got five thousand five hundred years of recorded history where men have interacted with women, and women have interacted with men. And they've done it in a certain way. And there may be some level of patriarchy to that. Yeah. So I'm sorry. You're not going to be able to erase 5,500 years of cultural, historic interaction with each other. That's well said. In one segment of the population, snap your fingers. We're Mm going to cleanse out and politically sanitize. and Which is almost what Me Too did. Yeah. That's almost what Me Too did. And can't do it it just doesn't happen you know what yeah. i mean i have a question for you before we uh get done because we've kept you for yeah we can't i'm amazed he stayed this long yeah we've kept you for quite a while who do you think the best president in u.s history is and the worst president in u.s history is you being a political history buff i was curious to get your opinion so, on it. so obviously you know people wouldn't remember this you know but andrew johnson uh who succeeded uh uh, Abraham Lincoln literally was an unmitigated disaster. He literally set the South back. Yeah. Um, 
and the whole process of reconstruction and the, you know, the unif- reunification of the society. Had Lincoln lived, I think we would have been in a better, fairer society earlier. Yeah. I don't think you would have had to wait till 1965 for some of the voting uh, rights legislation. But, uh, but Andrew Johnson... Reconstruction finished very, very briefly, as I recall. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, Andrew Johnson... Shambles and he declared Chris it. studies yeah. that extensively himself, so I'm... Yeah. I'm... yeah, so Andrew Johnson was an unmitigated disaster and probably of the 40... Remember, there's only been 44 presidents. We, yeah. we called yeah. Trump the 45th president, but Grover Cleveland became president twice. So, yeah. so of the 44... And now it's men, so I'm just going to say men. Of the yeah. 44 men that have been president, I uh, think Andrew Johnson was probably the worst, and he and he became president at the worst possible time. Yeah. Now, if you're going to say the best president, um, um, the best president, everyone sometimes lean, leans on Lincoln and says that he was the best president. But but I will say over and over again on President's Day. Uh, it was George Washington, because if you really understand Washington's personality and had the first job, <laughs> he was the only person that could have put that coalition together. If you like reading this stuff, go to Pauline Myers books on the uh, Constitution and the uh, Constitutional Convention. OK, she, she passed away a few years ago. She was a Harvard historian, but she wrote some of the finest stuff uh, based on the archives of what actually happened. And it's very, very clear that without Washington, uh, you don't get to the modern society that we have. He really did not want to be a monarch. Yeah. They offered him the opportunity for a monarchy, uh, and he did not want to gift that down to his descendants. He, he thought that that would be too corruptive for the society, yeah. having experienced the aristocracies in Europe. And so the fact that he was able to walk away from the power most powerful position in the country, albeit it was a small, not as powerful of a country as it is today, but he walked away from it. And he referenced, you may remember this from your history, but he referenced General Cincinnatus. And, and, oh, and I didn't know that. Uh, so, so for your listeners, Cincinnatus was the Roman general that brought, brought down the insurrection in Rome uh, and to keep the Republic going. They wanted to make him an emperor. He laughed and said, I'm not doing that. I'm a farmer. I'm a citizen soldier. I'm returning. I'm returning to my farm and I'm uh, I'm going to go run my farm. And so what Washington said after he served for eight years, he bowed out gracefully and he said he was returning to Mount Vernon and he referenced Cincinnati. And of course, Mm. Cincinnati, Ohio is named after that great Roman general. But and I always thought it was the guy on Daniel Boone. uh, Okay, but. Yeah, but also he was also named after uh, 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 Cincinnati. But but, hmm. you know, just so to me, I think there's no question that Washington was the best president. Now, in the modern era, uh, my Republican friends will hate me for saying this, but Franklin Roosevelt was unbelievable as a commander in chief. Mm-hmm. And uh, if you if you like this stuff, read uh, Conrad Black's book, Franklin Roosevelt, Champion of Freedom. Or read the uh, three-volume series by Nigel Hamilton. Uh, the third volume is going to come out later uh, in May. I know Chris will be reading it. He'll yeah, take your yeah. recommendation. But, but the first two were amazing about his judgment as a wartime leader. And remember, he really laid out the blueprint for the modern American middle class. He also, people don't realize this, but it was him and his team that put together the United Nations in 1942 and 1943 during the war. And so yeah. when the war ended, even after he was dead, the blueprint for the United Nations was already in place. And when they got to San Francisco to lay it out, of course, he had the support of the Americans and the Russians and, uh, and, the, great, and, and the United Kingdom. So, so I think as a modern president, he was by far the best and most successful. And of course, he broke Washington's tradition and he ran for four terms. Yeah, a, a quote that I've always heard associated with Washington that I liked is "Grace is knowing when to leave," which I've mm-hmm. always really thought was a great quote. It's I applaud that the OVW. It's an amazing. It's an amazing quote. One of uh, one of Roosevelt's best quotes on public speaking: "Stand up, speak quickly, sit down." <laughs> I love that. 
That's that was, good. That is fantastic. People will get bored quickly no matter who you are. So just yeah. get up and down quickly. Well, real quickly, because I wanted to get this in from the beginning of the show, is that I know that you were the um, uh, press secretary for 11 days, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And the reason you got let go was because I was not a Steve Bannon fan either. I don't know too yeah. many that associate with yeah. me. That are. Very, very bad guy. And well, I agree with you. And what you said, I, I basically fell in love with you. I didn't give a damn what party you were with. I said, he just spoke his damn mind. It's a sh And as much as, as Trump has spoke his mind, I'm shocked that he let you go for that. Because well, you know, I don't, I don't, he's, he's, on equal terms. Well, he's the president. I'm not. I um, trusted somebody. It would be like yeah. me having a private, I had a private phone call, I thought, with yeah. somebody that was from my local area. He was an Italian kid whose father knew my dad for 50 years. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, he he's right. I didn't technically say we were off the record. Yeah. So therefore, that's my mistake. Um, right. And I, I made a mistake. It was fireable. It was definitely a fireable offense, Kenny. So yeah. uh, the fact that they fired me over it, I don't blame anybody but myself. Yeah. I'm very clear with that. I've been very accountable. I did agree with you. I did agree with you. For but, whatever but while I was saying, he was asking me, to he oh we're gonna write a promotional piece on you in the New Yorker I said what do you think I am I'm Steve Bannon I'm not in my office blanking blankety blank <laughs> and I, I'm gonna be promotional like Steve Bannon that that loser yeah and, uh, <laughs> and he ran to CNN with it he wrote up and I, and I guess Bannon was still around at this point yeah Bannon was still around but he was getting okay. his ass fired and I was I had a lot to do with getting him fired yeah. I exposed <laughs> the lying leaking nature and his nefarious behavior. Right. Um, and, you know, listen, I mean, I'll tell you something I did last week. I had lunch with General Kelly. Oh, my. Oh, that's right. I remember you talking about that with Cuomo. Yeah. John John Kelly fired me. And yeah. Uh, he's an American uh, war hero, four-star he general. Is. I have no hard feelings about what he did. I get the fact that I put him and the president in an awkward spot. Yeah. Um, you know, and so I have no hard feelings. And we buried the hatchet. He's going to speak at my conference. Fantastic. Um, but he's a different guy than like a Ryan's previous or Steve Bannon. You don't you don't need to be near that level of toxicity in your life. You know, those are <laughs> those really, really bad people. And they're they're the type of people uh, and they're they're the type of people that America needs. The great thing about social media today, mm -hmm. not bad things, but th those people need to be exposed. They need to be uh, like rats or like cockroaches in the kitchen. They've got to be exposed so that we can get rid of them, you know, put better people in place. <clears throat> your quick opinion, because she gets a lot of criticism, obviously, for, especially from the left, uh, your opinions on Sarah, Sarah Huckabee Sanders. Well, I love her. You know, I, as you, you probably remember this, I made her the press secretary. I mean, obviously, I had to get the president to sign off on it. But yeah. She was my recommendation. You know I, what? I did not know that. Yeah, I didn't know yeah, that you so, were going to put her in place. I didn't. Yeah, so after Spicer quit, uh, I was in the Oval Office with the president. I said she should be the press secretary. She does a great job, you know. So I, I, I wanted her. And uh, listen, that's the toughest job in the world. You know? uh, I wouldn't so, want it. <laughs> so, so you know, I mean, she's had sometimes twist herself up like a pretzel. That's super difficult. I know that. Um, yeah. But, but let me let me tell you this. You know, uh, um, my heart goes out to her. I think she's a very decent person. Yeah. It, 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 it seems to be there, but she does get put in a tough way. Uh, and and it used to be called the daily press conference, and now we get one every six or seven weeks. Well, I think some of that is the war declaration on the media. I really was trying to put an end to that. I didn't, I would have had think, the president. I think you would have, because you didn't duck anybody. You answered each and every question, yeah. and uh, you, you handled yourself amazingly. I was praying that job was yours. Well, I, I appreciate that, sir. I, I don't know if I would have been able to end it or not, but I was certainly trying to. Yeah. Uh, well, one other quick question, uh, and I know we've kept you way over. Uh, how did you develop your relationship with my boy, John Cena? How did this happen? So uh, one of my uh, friends, uh, uh, his name is Ron Santella, mm -hmm. is uh, of the first cousin of the twins. Oh, okay. So his uh, mom is the sister of the twins' dad, and so uh, I it was really through yeah. one of my <laughs> one of my best friends, and so as a result of which I got to meet John through him. Because I have no idea what John's political stances are. 
never came up in the years that we had him at OVW. Yeah, never, never came up with me either, by the way. So I, I, I amazing. Yeah, but amazing. I, I think that remember what Michael Jordan said. Uh, they asked him about politics. He says, "I'm not getting involved." Both Democrats and Republicans buy sneakers. That's probably John. There you <laughs> go. There you go. Right. Uh,